And quickly moving on from that one, we've got some also some other interesting news regarding Balenciaga. It's gone kind of quiet on Balenciaga's front, um, which has kind of been smart in terms of dealing with it in terms of a PI crisis type of way. They've sort of backed away from making any sort of public comments. They've essentially, I think, put a gag order on Demna and maybe, you know, kind of denied him the opportunity to try and clear his name because when he did try and clear it, he did essentially obfuscate himself from any sort of blame. He did sort of push away any sort of responsibility and kind of made it seem like he was just this kind of, you know, this um, damsel in distress who was being pulled in different directions and he had no real control over what he was doing, which is obviously isn't, you know, laying in any kind of reality or facts because in some sense, fashion does this all the time. They'll let you believe that some one person is responsible for the entire thing or what's happening in front of your eyes when you know with discernment, with a little bit of understanding, a little bit of experience that there are loads of different people in the industry or loads of different people behind the scenes who are working at the same time with that person to create this amazing vision of what you see in the runway, what you see in campaigns, what you see in lookbooks, what you see in editorials. It's not always one person, but fashion will let you believe it's one person. And then they, that person will also kind of, you know, um, kind of uh accept the lie and sort of perform behind it also but then once something goes wrong suddenly they start pointing fingers and start pushing away to people so to see blenz yoga and demna and a few people associated with them kind of come out when that whole bdsm teddy bear thing happened and try and blame you know production companies who list essentially the what sometimes from my experience of working in the industry and knowing some people that have worked in the industry far longer than i've been exposed to it sometimes these production companies or these um you know people that do these things and put these things together these fixes they essentially all they do is just book ubers they book ubers they arrange the lunches um they make sure everybody everybody on set has what they need but in terms of creating the vision that's on display that you see in editorials you see in campaigns that mostly comes from the brand and whoever they're working with in terms of creating, creating that creative whether it's collaboration with the photographer the stylist but there's always somebody in-house who's kind of what makes that work but a production company be responsible for the bdsm um bear kitty bear type of flip and shoot was a preposterous um assertion to put out there and the fact that they weren't willing to accept responsibility and trying to push it away and blame those people and then the whole you know fake suing thing happened and whatnot it was a real kind of own goal when it comes to caring and how they dealt with that in that kind of situation but it looks like they've kind of understood what they did wrong they've kind of put out you know they put out the statement they essentially deleted their instagram and made it basically um you know null by closing the comments and only leaving one post up so they basically refused to accept any accountability but if you go on another page like diet prada and other and, and i think there was someone like not style.com and stuff you see plenty of people standing off on what they think about balenciaga but i think it has a pr strategy they did pretty well keep quiet and um, let it kind of die down and hope you can kind of rectify it going forward now the rumblings that i've been hearing on the grapevine was that they were never ever in any danger or them was never ever in any danger of being fired there was always this understanding behind the scenes that what he's done for the brand, how much money he's basically made them essentially, which kind of proves the point that, you know, cancer culture industry doesn't really exist. It only exists if you're not good and if you're not performing. But if you are performing, you can essentially get away with murder, right? We've seen already with Daniel Lee. I think anybody else in his position, if he gets accused of calling a black person, whatever he called them in a meeting, even if it's not true, just the accusation alone, it could kill your career. But the fact that he was very good at what he did before he got booted from Balenciaga, sorry, Protect Veneta, and obviously he kind of helped the sales over there and kind of created a moment in culture, even if it was even just a moment in culture and, you know, was able to kind of spearhead some really interesting products and whatnot that kind of captured people's imagination. It was only... It was only kind of um, it only made sense for someone like a Demna, considering what he's done for the comp for the company overall and just fashion at large in terms of the shapes and the aesthetic going forward. It was very unlikely that Balenciaga were gonna you know bin him straight away. They were definitely gonna allow him to, you know, I would assume hang him hang himself by basically not performing. Maybe he kind of lets the situation get to him and we see the worst version of Demna going forward. Or because some people you know from what I've been gleaning online and reading between the lines. A lot of people, especially a lot of industry has a lot of people, a lot of people that are really big fans of Balenciaga Couture, a lot of people were saying that they were kind of getting tired of the constant kind of, um, of kind of constantly being the butt of the joke because that's essentially what Demna was doing, especially towards his time, you know, that legendary run at Vetemar was definitely something that made me fall in love with the guy as a designer, but it definitely could be said that he was always trying to poke fun at the industry 
Maybe it was come. Maybe it's something from bitterness from how he was treated. Maybe it's just him not really respecting people in the industry too tough. But the fashion industry people got tired of being the butt of the jokes all the time. They kind of got tired of being teased. They kind of got tired that it was always a bit of a troll going on, and they just wanted to see beautiful things in the runway again. And after a while, you know, them there's kind of one man mission to kind of make ugly beautiful again. People just want to look cute. So the kind of exaggerated shapes and the reliance on streetwear and sportswear, which you know people in fashion already hate, because essentially it's a sort of like a dog for them. Hating, I always felt like hating sportswear and streetwear was like a dog whistle to hate the working class or maybe just black people, right? Because they just they hate that element. They want to just be transported to a fairy um, Neverland kind of idea of fashion and be kind of you know you always see fashion people, especially online, when it comes to Couture Week, they're waxing lyrical about a return to tailoring, a return to fashion with a capital F. They love all that magical side of things, but when it comes to actually creating clothes that people in real life want to wear, fashion people hate that. And real life people, you know, go to any major high street, are wearing hoodies, jeans, sneakers, t-shirts, overcoats sports coats and stuff it's what them is kind of key and mastered but over time it felt like the, the the appeal of that was kind of waning so if anything the bdsm bear controversy happened at the right time because i felt like maybe that balenciaga were always gonna maybe or caring was you know the group maybe all, all together maybe gonna sit sit flipping um what's his face they were gonna sit them down and basically try and work out a solution to kind of go back to what Balenciaga is kind of known for during the Cristobal era and kind of you know kind of center it on more on more fashion with a capital S and less of the street weary type of stuff luxury or kind of the elevated street wear. I'd imagine that would be the thing going forward so my guess when I made the video before was that they were obviously going to use this time to go back to what they know best or go back to what made Balenciaga Balenciaga and one of the kind of the key things that kind of pointed out was that post that they left up on their Instagram, which I think is still there, which has some archive footage of some couture shows from Blanchard back in the day. And it was like a season's greeting sort of post they put up. And that was clearly for me an indication that they were thinking, OK, cool, going forward, we need to kind of um, we need to uh, give this guy them the like sensitivity training or whatever or archival training and get him back to really designing like more like this and less appealing to that edgy edgier sort of stuff because clearly the ramifications with that were really felt far and wide to the point where you know they had to kind of come out with statements and whatnot so this news regardless of high snobiety kind of touches on that and it says the following here it says uh, Blenshaga will show at Paris Fashion Week coming up. So Blenshaga will show at Paris Fashion Week in March. Selling speculation that the brand would sit at one out expo- um, following the explosive ad campaign scandal. Fashion Insider Style.com announced the news on January the 30th, posting the date and the time Blenshaga's full winter 2023 full uh, show would be, which is March the 5th at 11:30 a.m. Paris time on Instagram and other pages followed suit. Blenshaga itself has yet to confirm. So this is a conversation that we need going forward. That def- Blitz Joker is definitely going to be debuting again on Paris Fashion Week, um, March, sorry, 5th of March, 11.30. So I do expect to see a much more pared down return to former glory Balenciaga. I expect to see that going forward for the foreseeable future. And this kind of edgy, edgelord, provocative, um, streetwear obsessed version of Balenciaga that Demna kind of carried on from Vetema is kind of gone. I think that's dead in the water. Um, that's definitely not going to be something going forward. And I think maybe even behind the scenes, they probably put something in place in terms of um, what you would call it, in terms of procedures and protocols that will make sure that editorials like the one that featured the BDCM Bear won't come out straight away. And that essentially will kind of hamper Demna's creative vision because I read a lot of his interviews and I remember specifically during the time he was doing quite a lot of press, he was kind of bragging and really boasting about the de facto freedom he gets from caring to do what the hell he wants like his vision is basically unfiltered because of how much grace he's been awarded because of the commercial success of Balenciaga so they kind of let him kind of do what he wanted but you would imagine off the back of this whole BDSM thing there's probably people now who are going to get in between him and his vision getting out there so even though we might see a more muted a much more pared down a much more subtle a less in your face Balenciaga it may not be really that cool and interesting because we might see suits getting their flipping mucky chubby um you know uh champagne and caviar drenched fingers into the pie 
and usually we all know what the common adage is about you know too many flipping fingers in the pie too many flipping chefs in the kitchen the final image or the final product we see in the runway could be somewhat crappy considering what we see before because before we saw pure vision it's like Hayley Semen um, at flipping um, Celine or before that at Saint Laurent what you're seeing for the most part on that runway is is Hedy being Hedy, right? He's putting out exactly what he wants to put out, his vision of there for better or worse. But the moment the suits start getting involved and they start demanding certain things, suddenly the brand starts to become a little bit shitty and then you suddenly stop buying it, you suddenly stop talking about it and you forget why. But let's see what happens going forward, but I'm not surprised by this news in the slightest. I am not surprised.